Mr. Minister, what a pleasure to see you. My pleasure. I know you've been working very hard <laughs> over the past week, uh, traveling every day and meeting your counterparts. Tell me more about what is happening after the two prime ministers met and came out with a whole set of fruitful results. Uh, thank you very much for, for the opportunity. Um, in fact, my trip um, is a late work preparation um, to make sure that we hit the ground running as the two prime ministers signal to both countries and the international market our intention to, to make things happen much faster. Um, so while uh, Premier Lee and uh, Prime Minister Anwar met and signed uh, a series of memorandums in, in Malaysia, I was actually here uh, meeting provincial and municipal governments and especially the businesses that have the strategic fit to take advantage of this closer cooperation between the two countries. It exceeded my expectation. Uh, my team was having some difficulty in the beginning while planning because I wasn't sure whether um, what I feel as a very strategic fit for the two markets will be shared by especially the companies here because the market in China is huge. If I were a, a company in China with the kind of advanced technology they have, uh, there's enough domestic market to sustain that. So it's quite difficult to convince such companies to go elsewhere. Uh, but from all my meetings, um, it really exceeded my expectation. There is an understanding and appreciation that on the part of the Chinese companies and economy, it makes sense to internationalize. Um, and um, Malaysia is a good launch pad to uh, the ASEAN market. Mm -hmm. On our part, I think we were able to communicate and um, our counterparts appreciate the fact that this stage of our economy has a very good fit with the Chinese companies because they are more nimble when it comes to innovation um, and pace of change, they are more collaborative and therefore at the time when our economy requires those um, injections, um, it makes sense to collaborate closely with the Chinese companies. One of the things is about smart manufacturing um, and also the digital transformation. How do you see the cooperation between the two countries when it comes to industries will be able to help both sides to realize their dreams? So the Chinese companies, in my opinion, has superiority in the technology as well as in um, the experience to scale up in, in, for digital economy because of your market size. Mm -hmm. Now we can work and see how um, Chinese companies uh, can work on the next big market, which is the ASEAN market. Within 10 years, okay. it is expected to rival Europe in terms of the size. Um, and Malaysia will benefit from it because uh, we have a very strong manufacturing base, but a lot of our experience dates back to the 70s and 80s. It is very important for us to be able to scale up mm -hmm. through smart manufacturing and not just be part of the global supply chain um, elsewhere. Um, and this presents a good opportunity and is a win-win uh, for both uh, China and Malaysia. Right. Recently, we see some uh, trade issues uh, going on between China, for example, and mm. some of the developed economies, mm. uh, US and uh, Europe, mm. uh, EU rather, mm. uh, regarding the tariffs uh, of uh, electronic vehicles, mm. batteries, as well as mm. solar panels. Mm. Now, from a developing country and a big emerging economy mm. like Malaysia, mm. what do you make of all these uh, latest discussions, to say the least? We know our place in the world. We consider ourselves as a small, open, um, and non-aligned countries. Countries like ours, depends and believes in free trade and competition. And I think um, we have been so vocal that we intend to be actively neutral because we are at a stage where we feel that we will benefit 
um, from anyone who's able to trade and uh, create value out of free trade globally. Um, if I can talk directly to the EV manufacturers in, in China, I think uh, this is the best time to consider expanding to Malaysia for a few reasons. First, Malaysia is the largest private vehicle market in ASEAN. Mm -hmm. um, we have more private vehicles than population. Secondly, um, Malaysia intends to become the regional leader in energy transition and we have set an extremely high target for EV adoption. Mm. By 2050, the target is 80% uh, EV adoption. Um, most EVs that are available in Malaysia now is on the high ends, you know, so it's, it's a bit more costly and only certain um, group of people um, can afford it. But the market for the middle and lower um, class of EVs right. is huge mm -hmm. and of all the EVs companies in, in the world, first China has you know, plenty of models in, in that category. Secondly, obviously, the two wheels, the the, three yeah, wheels, yes. right? yeah, and and um, um, obviously, uh, Chinese um, chi China has the cost competitiveness, and I can tell you, um, we have I think the the biggest brand in Malaysia now is BYD. Um, it's very popular, extremely popular. So. Um, Malaysia intends to see um, revving up of EV mm -hmm. much faster than what we already have now. We see Malaysia also working very hard with your neighbouring countries on some of the economic zones in order to be the launching pad working with China for the whole ASEAN region. Tell us more about how this kind of a, a trilateral mm -hmm. or even beyond mm -hmm. a cooperation could work mm -hmm. also in an efficient way. Um, Malaysia is going to take uh, the chairmanship of ASEAN in uh, 2025. Congratulations. So uh, part of our main focus um, uh, through our chairmanship of ASEAN mm -hmm. is to make sure that ASEAN as a market can integrate faster. In the past, the doctrine of ASEAN is common prosperity, but we basically do our separate things mm -hmm. and therefore each country pursue uh, bilateral um, uh, arrangements with counterparts separately. That's why the Johor Slang uh, um, Singapore um, Special Economic Zone is very important. It is the first time that two countries agree to harmonize our regulations and our processes in order to leverage on each other's strength. Mm -hmm. um, Singapore has a sophistication as a, a financier centre, um, yet um, Malaysia on the southern tip provides the kind of resources um, that Singapore doesn't have. So if I were a Chinese corporation, it fits perfectly into my internationalization um, strategy mm -hmm. um, because um, ASEAN is going to be a, a very important consumer market right. in 10 years on the line. Um, you need to have a beach head. And the, uh, uh, the special economic zone offers a full-fledged um, um, complete ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get the best from Singapore, yet you can also get the best from Malaysia uh, and and, and uh, we feel that um, this model, we have to make it work in order to demonstrate to ASEAN that we have to integrate faster for us to, potential, uh, to, to realize our potential in the future. As the Minister of Industry, how do you see China's approach of high quality development? Um, I'm most impressed with the speed of technology advancements and the innovation and the creativity and the nimbleness to um, roll out futuristic products and services and build the whole ecosystem vertically and horizontally to support that. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to be able to collaborate and pick up the kind of um, skills that China has been ha have, um, has, has had the ability to develop over the last 20, 30 years. Uh, regarding the faster development of chip industry uh, going on in Malaysia, 
who would be able to think about that? I mean, more than 10 years ago, then Malaysia has become this rising star in the global supply chain of chips. How do you see this thing happened, mm. you know, the way it happened, mm. and to maintain this advantage mm. for years to come? We, we started um, almost 50 years ago because we, we have um, a rather advanced education system. Mm. Um, 50 years ago, our, our, the quality of our education system was almost at par with Singapore then, but we were far cheaper. So the MNCs of the world from developed um, economies see Malaysia as, as a good base um, for back-end manufacturing. Mm. Over the years, Malaysia has become a global leader in back-end you know, testing assembly of chips. Um, but there's a limit to that. Um, we now aspire to go higher, mm. um, which means that we have to do front-end um, um, activities because that is where the high-quality investments will come in. And it's, it's actually quite um, intertwined with the size of the market mm -hmm. because the demands for chips and therefore the demands for cheap designs and chip manufacturing is also related to the consumer markets. The, mm -hmm. That is something that Malaysia is focusing now. We would like to grow ASEAN market with Malaysia as Launchpad mm -hmm. as a strong consumer market in the future. We would like to accelerate our front-end activities in semiconductor because we now have the opportunity to emulate the kind of um, steps that Chinese had done in the last 20 years because some of the characteristics are there. Mm -hmm. We are already a global leader in the back end. Okay. The size of the ASEAN market is growing. We are integrated with the uh, Chinese market. And now, you know, with the strategic fit of working with Chinese strategy of internationalization, um, we can now acquire the know-how to mutually grow our semiconductors. Mm, wonderful. But you know, the world is developing very fast, particularly the latest the technologies. So now it's not just about how to stay in the internet age, quote unquote, but rather how to jump into the AI age mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. So how to be a part of that global supply chain mm -hmm. regarding latest development of AI would be a great question for all. How is Malaysia being a winner mm -hmm. in the internet age mm -hmm. uh, as a result of uh, chip manufacturing? Thinking about this latest stage, I know Mr. Mm -hmm. Minister, you're thinking about that as the <laughs> industry minister. Um, again, it, Malaysia has always been blessed because we have a good building blocks. Mm -hmm. Just as the uh, semiconductor, we've had the manufacturing base in the last 50 years. When it comes to AI, we have a few um, competitive advantage that is among um, uh, th that that attracts an influx of um, data centers. So in terms of compute power, um, Malaysia is a hub in ASEAN. So uh, a lot of models would have to be trained in ASEAN. So what we need now is a software part. We need to work with everyone in the world. Um, and, and I know that a lot of the LLMs um, developed by Chinese companies mm -hmm. um, are being um, uh, trained in data centers, uh, in, in clouds, in, in Malaysia. So if we continue this and, and uh, with full government support, uh, we will be able to have a leading edge to make sure that we are not left behind in the AI uh, development. Mm -hmm. Final question, Mr. Minister. This year celebrates the 50th anniversary mm. of the relations between China and Malaysia. Wow, if you look at history, what a trip, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, having said that, though, we are also in the world, uh, very interestingly, at many intersections. Geopolitics getting ever more complex and likely to have a bigger impact. Meanwhile, economics slow down, mm. yet there can be momentum to pick up. Mm. At the same time, technology is really soaring, mm. and yet, given the earlier two situations, uh, technologies, where is it going, it's very hard to tell. Mm. So Mr. Minister, sitting where you are, 
coming from a background of both government and business uh, inside Malaysia and also internationally. What do you make of this interesting intersections mm -hmm. and where is China-Malaysia from where you are? Um, the more we integrate as a global market, the more we are affected by um, factors outside our control. Indeed. This is the bit where Malaysia believes that our own nimbleness is important. Mm. And the nimbleness must be centred on value creation. Mm. And um, that's why um, in, in the case of Malaysia and China, mm. uh, after 50 years of collaboration, there is a sense of mutual, honest uh, partnership. Mm. And this, this honest partnership uh, goes beyond the bilateral at the government to government level. The fit is really good and, uh, and, and I think it will benefit both um, Chinese uh, businesses and Malaysian businesses and our respective economies because um, it will allow us to step up our own resilience in managing uh, the fast-changing uh, environment that we operate in. Mr. Minister, what a pleasure.